what's up everybody welcome back to this video i'm going to make a series of uh connection that connection of why i think lightning is underrated and uh most people are not paying attention to lightning and this technology deserves so much attention right now i think it's one of the most important uh development right now bit bitcoin and lightning because this has the potential to decentralize the internet as we know it so so now i'm gonna first uh go uh with the one of the founder of the internet this was from uh 2014 uh this video um, I will put the link below so you can watch the full interview. Uh, but but from this, you will have a, a better view of what's going on on this uh, on this guy. So this is uh, really really wonderful. So anyway, um, yes. This person in the middle was uh, one of the founder of the internet, and what. I'm trying to do here is to show you why why Bitcoin is so important and why Bitcoin will replace the foundation of the internet and it will fix the internet decentralization problem by using second layer like lightning and the founder of lightning is in the stock right, right there this stock was from uh, 2014 so the founder of lightning lab uh, elizabeth stock uh, she's the one with the gray uh, leg over there um so i'll uh, she'll talk too so i'm gonna put the link below you can watch the whole the full and uh, the full uh, interview but i will uh this is uh just a simple talk uh explanation about the internet how the internet works so you can really understand uh the full version of what i want to say here and why bitcoin solve this problem of decentralization and um censorship and everything so now first uh listen to it really this. answers the question when we're talking about the internet what physically are we talking about this is two minutes, and it's astoundingly straightforward. Have you ever wondered what happens when someone in England visits the World Science Festival's webpage? First, their computer needs to ask the World Science Festival server for a copy of that webpage. The computer sticks this request into a virtual envelope called a packet, wrapped with specific information about that request, including the World Science Festival's IP address. The computer sends this packet out of the house and below the street via large underground copper wires. It passes through small regional networks before ending up here at Telehouse North in London. Telehouse North is England's main internet hub. The IP address on this packet tells the hub that the World Science Festival server is actually in Los Angeles. So Telehouse North sends the packet out as light across the Atlantic, over fiber optic cables buried deep beneath the ocean. The packet ends up here, 60 Hudson Street, New York City, the largest internet hub on the East Coast. This hub sends the packet through a series of regional networks connecting New York to Los Angeles, where the World Science Festival server resides. The server reads the request and gets ready to send the web page to England. But web pages made up of images and text are too large to send us a single packet of data. So how do we get it back to England? Imagine a group of 5,000 tourists visiting New York City in a single gigantic tour bus. They are way up in Harlem, but they want to visit... No, no this, is, uh, this is the problem with uh, the internet right now. You see, all everybody is using this uh, huge and long buses, um, like uh, Twitter, um, uh, Gmail, Google. All those huge buses, uh, they are the centralization of the internet, right? All those Facebook, right? So they are the centralization of the internet. So now it becomes a big problem. They can easily censor 
anybody who is allowed to get on the bus and and the problem also is the congestion and now you will see uh, let's listen more to visit the Statue of Liberty before it closes but it's rush hour on a Friday there's no way that giant bus is going to fit through those crazy congested streets so they decide to get off the bus and spread out some take the subway some take cabs a few rent bikes and some even take kayaks down the Hudson River how they get there doesn't matter as long as they get there on time Likewise, for the internet to work efficiently, this web page is pulverized into thousands of tiny packets of data, each one wrapped with all of the information it needs to rebuild itself in England. The packets are sent to LA's One Wilshire hub, which checks the traffic report before sending them off. Through miles and miles of land they travel, checking in through different hubs. Like our New York City tourists, those packets don't care how they get there as long as they get there as fast as possible. Most of them will go through 60 Hudson in New York, where they are redirected back to England as light, riding a fiber of glass as thick as a silver dollar. Then back on copper wire through regional British networks until all the packets reach their destination and... And this epic journey? It all happens in about a second along with trillions upon trillions of similar journeys that happen each and every day on this remarkable, easy to take for granted, network of networks we call the Internet. It's pretty good. Now, this is a good explanation of what is the Internet, right? So, it was supposed to be something that's decentralized, that's allowing... Um, a communication of uh, all over the globe right no no nobody censor like nobody blocking you like everything you know open right so like i just uh show you but i i think i'm gonna let you uh uh watch this of uh elizabeth stark explaining uh, this better than what i could uh explain talk to you today about why layer two matters for the future of the decentralized internet and for blockchains. Let's take a trip down internet history lane. The year is 1995. The proprietary networks like AOL, CompuServe, Prodigy actually controlled the way that people would connect to their networks. But it turned out several years prior, the World Wide Web came out, Tim Berners-Lee came up with it, and it enabled anybody to build on top of it, and it was decentralized. So ultimately, it was the World Wide Web that won out over these proprietary networks. 1995 was a crucial year in the history of the internet. So Time Magazine on March 1st, 95, declared a welcome to cyberspace. Millions more people were connecting to the internet due to the breadth of what the web could offer. There were lots of animated GIFs. You saw lots of uh, under construction signs. And you also saw Netscape IPO this year and one of the most significant ones of its time. 1995 was also the year Hacker the, Hackers the Movie came out. Uh, who here has seen that movie? Great film, right? Uh, great soundtrack. And turns out some friends of mine in New York uh, just two years ago did a 20th anniversary party for that film in a warehouse in Brooklyn. One of the actors actually showed up. So then we had this transition to the OOs, the knots, if you will. And we went from the more decentralized web when lots of people spun up mail servers and ran you know, their own web servers to this concept of the cloud, right? And the idea was great. You could then put your data in this ominous place called the cloud and it was super easy and you didn't have to store it on your own server. You also saw the advent of walled gardens. So you had you know, Facebook, Twitter coming alive then and they were platforms where all the user data was stored in a centralized manner and they could control things. So they could shut down your account, they could go offline, they could actually potentially censor users, and all your data could potentially be compromised as well. And exactly. So now I just uh, stop it here. Now, you see, um, this is what she's talking about, the censorship. Right? So Google can go down um, anytime. They can get hacked, and all your email is vulnerable and facebook the same right your identity all those things are held up to those big tech companies so 
they said oh it's in the your data is in the cloud right but there's no cloud right so and the censorship is crazy out there so uh, this is the the you know the centralization of the internet and this is what bitcoin solves and let's listen more and you have these entities that controlled these walled gardens but actually it turned out there really was no cloud right uh, as we've learned later on the internet and via various memes, it turns out the cloud was just somebody else's computer and your data was actually stored on that computer. So as we've learned today about Blockstack, there are many issues that come along with that. So along came 2008, something major happened in the history of global financial markets. What was it? Yep. So. Uh, <laughs> An individual or group of individuals going by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto, this is another guy whose name is Satoshi Nakamoto, different guy, um, came out with the Bitcoin white paper, peer-to-peer uh, -peer electronic cash system. And essentially what this propo proposed was the first blockchain. There's been some previous academic research, but really this is the first time in the paper the term chain of blocks was used. And what we had here was this major opportunity. I don't even think many realized it at the time, but when I first heard about Bitcoin in actually 2010, I saw this potential to re-decentralize the internet and to move things in a way back to the more mid-90s decentralization that we had and away from this concept of... Now, see, so she uh, saw the potential of Bitcoin uh, uh, as, a, as a mechanism to decentralize, really decentralize this, the internet from the beginning of as intentionally created for right, as a decentralized uh, platform where anybody can join and anybody can can use without being getting censored so now this is uh, this part uh, but I want to show you what I'm gonna go back in 2014 what she said and uh, what what really passionate her this, this is the passion you have to look to the person right and, and see what we, the concrete problem the person is really wanted to solve and then and then the position and and is this possible right so let's go back complicated or enriched that conversation you can see both sides of that coin right so given the current structure of say applications on top of the internet we've talked about the various layers um, we've seen a lot of, say, Gmail has only been around for, what, eight years now, maybe nine, and other applications that instead of hosting data on your own device or, you know, on your home computer, it made much more sense to have it centrally located such that if you wanted to check your email, say, when you're traveling in Afghanistan or if you're elsewhere and you're not on your own device with the data stored, you can access it that way, right? So clearly everyone uses cloud-based uh, applications. I'm sure you're familiar with many of them. One recently IPO'd, right? So um, what that means is that our data is stored in a central location, but at the same time, we lose an element of control because there is a gatekeeper now, and in particular, that could be, say, YouTube, the host of videos, or, say, you know, Gmail, Facebook, and so on. And in many ways, um, for example, uh, YouTube uses geolocation technology, um, sorry, geofiltering technology to filter various videos in, say, Thailand, it's illegal yes. to criticize the king. So um, YouTube will geofilter videos that are critical of the king in Thailand. Um, there are other scenarios in which videos are taken down from everything for copyright reasons or for violations of, of laws and so on. And there's a central choke point. So on the one hand, there can be more control. Sometimes that's a good thing, say, in the case of child pornography. On the other hand, there can also be censorship involved. Um, there are also privacy issues. I don't know if people have heard about, say, what happened with Sony or a variety of other. It feels like every week there's a new example of, say, a massive breach of user data. But when user data is stored in a way in which it's accessible all in one place and often not encrypted, which is still shocking to me, say that Sony wouldn't use such encryption, um, it's much more easily accessed. So what we're seeing now is a backlash against this cloud infrastructure and a push toward greater decentralization the internet inherently, as we've discussed, is a decentralized network, right? You have all the New Yorkers or the tourists, sorry, in New York that are trying to get the Statue of Liberty. But what we're seeing is more and more buses that are storing, say, the tourists, and now people are trying to get off the bus. 
<laughs> we, we've taken, we've already. Yeah, no. So this is uh, what she uh, said uh, from 2014. So very beautifully uh, said. So now this will give you now let's come here in 2022. It's gonna we're gonna go in 2022 um, to see what the development, what's going on in lightning lightning in that lab. Uh, sorry, li lightning lab. She created and and so and you you're gonna look to see what, what's the you know the, the dot and that are being connected and what she is planning to do basically and to see how beautifully she is like so motivated and she's doing it and nobody nobody really not many people really pay attention about this right because this is very revolutionary and and this is what i feel like a lot we don't pay attention enough in the you know in the bitcoin space in the crypto space um because too many people think that we need so many blockchains, right? And we need to like uh, have all those protocols and all those things. And then when we're done, we're gonna create those um, uh, interconnected, like interoperable blockchain to connect them together, stuff like that. But here's, here's what you need to know about Lightning, uh, what she's doing. Now, this is uh, from Bloomberg, uh, I know, uh, most of you guys don't really trust some of those mainstream media platforms, but uh, just listen to what she has to say. Don't really worry about the other people uh, what they have to say, but just listen to what the stock has to say. You have this new funding round that has come from Brevin Howard, Valor, Vlad Tenev, others. What does this actually help you do? And what does this new protocol, Taro, actually do in terms of helping making Bitcoin transfers much easier? First of all, thanks so much for having me uh, and greetings everyone from Miami here for the Bitcoin 2022 conference. Um, so it's been quite a week for us in the Bitcoin and Lightning community. On Tuesday, we announced our uh, $70 million Series B fundraise for my company, Lightning Labs. We're building infrastructure for the Lightning Network. And what Lightning does is it enables people to send instant high volume transactions for low fees over Bitcoin. Lightning is a software layer on top of Bitcoin. But we also announced a new technology we've been working on called Taro, which enables people to, in the future, send asset stable coins and really any other currency that's out there potentially using Bitcoin as a global monetary network. So we're really excited to be working with these investors that understand this long-term vision and mission to bring financial access to the world. Now, no, you see what she said. She said, basically, you will be able to basically transact, um, move your asset, your crypto asset over Lightning, over the Lightning Network. So it's not only like Bitcoin, Satoshi, you can move over the Lightning. Lightning is an open network that can uh, you can use to move any other asset like uh you can move uh uh litecoin i think they already implement litecoin uh not not in full scale uh but you, they are planning on uh, uh issuing stable coin on top of lightning um so they are really talking about doing this uh, right now and they have they are they are working on other blockchain right other blockchain can move migrate to lightning and what what do you think that 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 does any this is really what interoperability is because of this lightning common uh, uh, protocol which is like just like uh, uh, PCP IP uh, of the internet if I send you an email right even if you have a hotmail email if or and I have a Gmail, I can still send you an email, right? Because we are using the same protocol. It's the same thing that's going to happen with the uh, Lightning. It's basically, you can use Lightning uh, as the uh, protocol, the base layer protocol for all those uh, different networks, right? And then they are all competing to each other, like uh, Cardano, Ethereum, uh, uh solana and all those other blockchain they can still exist but in order to co to connect them to send your data from light uh, from cardano to uh solana uh, or other blockchains you need to 
is if you're using a sim the same common protocol right the same common protocol so you can really easily send all those data or all those you can make all those uh, transfers right you can send email you can send your your uh, your uh, like DeFi and stuff like that all those things you can you can transact your uh, ADA from uh, from a Cardano blockchain to a Solana blockchain right so it really amazing so it gives you an idea of what what can you know really comes and then the bitcoin really the 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 base layer of this right or of trust and then lightning basically the second layer that facilitating that playing the role of the um decentralized internet now why this matters right why this matters now this is she's talking about terror terror is the new uh sort of uh, technology basically this is what will facilitate this because this really is it simply is like because of taproot taproot is the like uh just uh, the recent the most recent upgrade of bitcoin it facilitate you to send transaction using different UTXOs, like basically a combination of addresses put on together and send one transaction. Right. So because of this, they will use that uh, feature to uh, help them create that you know really um, interoperable uh, uh, interoperability on top of uh, Lightning. So this is basically what it is. Okay. So and this is why I feel like nobody will really pay will really pay enough attention to this incredible uh, development that are going on on lightning right so i'm just saying this for you guys out there and you need to really educate yourself really pay pay attention to what's going on to light in lightning because this is really what where the innovation is going on bitcoin is global the internet's global and really what we're seeing is bitcoin enables the internet of money today I can embed a photo in any application on the internet, you know, Twitter, WhatsApp, email, all of those. But why can't I easily send money or value globally, natively embedded on the internet? So the way I think about Lightning is it enables two kinds of use cases. One, use cases that weren't previously possible, and two, access for those that previously didn't have it. And this is a big global issue and an international issue. We look at a country like Nigeria, 70% of the population is 30 or under. Well, what do they all have? mobile phones but many of those people may not have access to a bank account or something like a visa or the traditional financial system so the way that i think about it is this technology will really enable people across the world to tap into the internet of money what the internet did for access and knowledge and information previously look at something like wikipedia bitcoin and lightning are doing for access to money and financial services Elizabeth, mainstream awareness of cryptocurrency and Bitcoin has shot up like a rocket over the last couple of years, but there's still such a long way to go to clarify confusion around digital assets. I'm curious what the themes are at Bitcoin Miami this year. What is everyone talking about? What are the you know most hyped issues and the, the biggest problem issues? Great question. Um, I think adoption is huge right now, right? The way that I think about it, the vast majority of the users in the future will not even know that they're using, say, the Bitcoin or the Lightning Network. They want it to just work. They want access. Broadly in the cryptocurrency space, we see a lot of technologies, but some of them are in, uh, in search of a solution as opposed to thinking about real problems for real people. So what I'm seeing now is a focus on real use cases, on real adoption, and the global element. I was just chatting uh, with developers today from places like Nigeria, from places like uh, Guatemala. So this is a global community. And this is also what I think distinguishes the Bitcoin community from some of the other, um, say, projects that are out there with the focus on actual adoption and real use cases, as opposed to speculation. Um, shout out to my friend Lynn Alden, who has written great macroeconomic research and studies Bitcoin and Lightning. And she talks about the utility to speculation ratio and how Bitcoin and Lightning are very utility oriented as opposed to merely speculation. Okay, okay. What she's saying here is that in the other crypto, um, you know, uh, projects, they basically based on, you know, price go up, like all those, like, you know, you're getting early and then you make money and stuff like that. That's, that's okay, right? It's, you know, in a capital, 
in a capitalism system you know you would like okay if you want to make money it's it's a, your choice right you want to whatever the way you want to make your money it's your way of making money right so it's your risk you take your own risk you lose you win it's your money but that's that's one that's one thing right you, you can base your project based on just speculation and people more people get in and make money and stuff like that but also it can be a great tool if the most sustainable project will be the one that provide the service right like if you basically if you have so many users in africa having the the need for a store of value right they will be using it to store their value right they, they will be using it to uh for uh for store value so they can they don't they don't lose their money the power the purchasing power of their money if people needed to move asset over the internet over lightning a second layer they will use it as you know to replace exchanges right so if people need to like uh need to use as a uh move stable coin over lightning they want to do that right so and and you people like uh countries like el salvador they want to use it they will use it to give the citizen a bank account right those are utilities and utility of the long term will will survive over speculation speculation it is nothing no fun that doesn't need any fundamental where like uh uh utility need fundamentals and also uh for you guys the other utility of the bitcoin lightning over lightning is being able to stream satoshis over your podcast or your uh your your channel or you know like when you have a youtube channel like you won't be able to monetize that all uh, you know before you have like thousands of subscribers and uh millions of views uh, but with uh you know you can s start making money basically uh with on a lightning uh, app that that has a pod podcast right or a, a lightning website that allow you to post your videos and as soon as people like your videos you can start making money right away they can stream your satoshis you can start streaming your satoshis by watching your videos and that makes you uh, become a better content content creator it makes you become a a, a more like uh you you're doing it not you know you're doing something uh, it makes you do it better right it makes you uh, a, a do a better job right because you're not just thinking about um you know the neck the best uh, clickbait and um uh, you know try to di disrupt somebody's life like when you look at the crypto space for example all those youtubers like the crypto influencers they are all detrimental to the newcomers why because the system is this way the system make them this way the system affect them so they have to uh, act uh, weird like they all of a sudden like when i first get in the space and you see a bunch of people telling me oh this is good it's good it's good to get in now or bitcoin buy bitcoin now and then after like bitcoin is dropping like the narrative is going away like elon musk said oh the the um uh, he's uh, selling Bitcoin, or uh, or he want he doesn't want to accept uh, Bitcoin payment anymore. And all those people are saying, "Oh, you have to sell Bitcoin." Like, what do you mean? Like, it's like it's all about views. They all care about uh, views and, and more. Uh, you know, like uh, people watching them. So and and then they just and also uh, the the motive is getting somebody to come for interview and then they interview them and they give them money and then they make money out of out of that so this is really really bad so because of this satoshis you can get paid you don't really have to sell yourself you sell your soul uh for money what because uh, you know you sacrifice your 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 viewers right you you sub your, your subscribers you you don't have to do that Right? So this is what Bitcoin saw fundamentally.
that lets you do what we call streaming sats or satoshis, the lowest denomination of Bitcoin. And we see this in use today with podcasts. There's some great um, podcasting 2.0 applications, many thousands operating on Lightning. You can pay per second. There are media aspects where you can pay small values for, say, articles. There are social networks, chat apps, and those are all operating over the Lightning network like Zion and Sphinx. So what we're seeing is a lot of people around the world are now able to tap in. It's early days, don't get me wrong, uh, to the capacity to earn and to be compensated for their creative work, as opposed to in the legacy system where the fee would actually be higher than the, the amount that yeah, somebody Yeah, Elizabeth, the fees are something I want to get your opinion on here. There's a lot of mistrust of the typical financial system, the big banks, credit card companies that is emerging over there at Bitcoin 2022. When you look at the fees that are being charged uh, for cross-border transactions, for transactions at all, do you think that the financial system as it exists now has failed us? Largely, yes. So why today do I need to send a paper check here in the US? Why do I need to wait days for an ACH payment to go through over an app like Venmo? In the US, we're actually behind. We see in emerging markets, they have faster systems and they can settle far faster. But when it comes to interoperability and the global element, there's still not a way that has been widely adopted by billions for people to say. All right, guys. So I'm going to keep it there. I am going to. Um, I'm gonna put the links for the videos below this is I'm gonna make a series of videos and showing you the potential of Bitcoin and lightning and uh, those uh, second layers and side chains so you guys can have the full conviction of uh, why Bitcoin matters and why stocking sad is way more better than trying to get confused with all those altcoins out there now I'm not telling you, you know, Satoshi, do you can get rich. I, I don't think you will be, uh, you know, a uh, millionaire like anytime soon by you have buying Satoshi right now. Like, you, it's just your choice, right? So I'm not saying you you should do that. I'm saying I think it's a better a, a decision to just get some Satoshi, right? Instead of just go to waste your money, risk your life on those altcoins that may not have that potential that you may think so by doing so and also let's say you 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 have the full conviction of a, a project it's up to you right? you can make your own decision but i'm um, just going to make the point here why you know you should really pay attention to lightning because i think this is what most people are, uh, are, are not paying attention to and then this is what most people are missing here. So this is why I'm making this series of videos to educate you, to open your eyes on what's going on here. And then you have to make your own decision about your investment or uh, what you think is better for your saving, right? As Bitcoin is a saving technology. So now I'm not saying, you know, you should buy Bitcoin. I'm not saying this. I'm just saying this is, those are open. I'm just throwing those out there. You make your own decision based on what you think is really convict really makes you uh gives you the most conviction right if buying bitcoin buying some other coin uh will will fail you right if you don't understand it if you have the full conviction then you can really start um uh, accumulating situations and will you have a success in your journey uh and in bitcoin but if you don't understand it you will sell uh, when there's panic, when those people, those fake YouTubers, uh, you know, fake those fake uh, crypto influencers uh, who don't really understand anything. Most of them, they have zero understanding of what I'm talking about. So they will fail you. So this is where I'm just posting those out there. You educate yourself. And I will, I will see for my fine model, most of those videos. And so I can send you those clips so you can watch. And if you like those uh, subscribe to this channel and then uh, so you can see more and more of those uh, type of videos